Major Slack Attack. Hey, my name is Major Slack, and this is Starfield. Yeah. yeah, I'm just as excited as you are. We've been waiting five long years for this new release from Bethesda, and it is finally here. And as many of you hardcore slackers know, I am a bona fide Bethesda video game fan. Play the crap out of Skyrim, play the crap out of Fallout 4, play the crap out of most of the Wolfenstein series, and of course I have many walkthroughs of all those, uh, both here on Major Slack Attack and over on my other channel, Major Slack Videos. Now, it's Starfield's turn! Released last month, that is, uh, I believe September 6th was the exact release date, September 6th, 2023. And this absolutely humongous, gigantic video game lands on you like a sumo wrestler and wraps you up in an unbreakable headlock of addictive gameplay. I freaking love it. I freaking love it. I'm currently 140 hours in and counting. So I think it's high time I cut into my Starfield gallop across the galaxy playtime and start producing a walkthrough. For those of you new to the Major Slack experience, I specialize in real walkthroughs. That, it, that means I practice and study before uploading videos. No bumbling and stumbling here. I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm going to get it done quickly and serve it up with informative commentary. And this will be a real walkthrough of Starfield. I have over 65 pages of detailed notes on the game. I've completed the main quest line. I've completed the Freestar Rangers quest line. I've set up a fantastic XP money farm, which I'm going to show you in this run. And I've purchased the most expensive ship in the game. And I've completed 28. This is new for me, eh? I have completed 28 out of 50 achievements, which is huge. Since, as many of you know, I'm not an achievement hunter at all. Not at all. Normally, I don't give a, chan a damn about achievements. But uh, this time, somehow, S uh, Starfield just sucked me in and I went for it. And <laughs> I've got 28 out of 50 achievements. Go figure, eh? Yeah. Who are you? And what have you done with Major Slack? Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so those are my credentials. I also recently spent $1,200 to upgrade my computer to run Starfield because the system requirements are somewhat on the heavy side. Here are my specs. AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPU. Uh, GeForce RTX 4070 video card. 16 gigabytes of RAM. And two times one terabyte SSD hard drives. And I'm running everything maxed out except um here let me just show you everything's maxed out except um crowd density i put it down to medium because i was just i just found the game too crowded that was kind of like a, a strategic thing sometimes when i'm trying to like just sit down uh, and rest somebody would take my seat it's like so many people in the way so i figured you know i just you know turn down the crowd density motion blur i can't stand so i turn that down off rather um, film grain I turned off depth of field I turned off I turned off because I can't stand depth of field and that's it other than that everything's either maxed out on ultra or high because the, that setting doesn't go to ultra okay that is it that is it okay without further ado let's fire up the grab drive engage warp speed and launch this baby into the galaxy of YouTube gaming. Starfield's real walkthrough starts now. Seals are good. 
Oxygen's good? Just do what you did last time, and you're fine. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple Listen rule? Listen to Lynn. Boss lady knows best. Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. It's just like, um, yeah, I work in the Stardock. Except, uh, with more cave-ins, lasers, and accidental dismemberment. Very helpful. Thank you. Ah, you're gonna be fine. Your first outing was solid. And, you know, let's be honest, it ain't exactly astrophysics. That's why I keep him around. Good pep talks. Yeah. And the fact that I can pinpoint a helium deposit from 300 meters. <laughs> Not untrue. A shame we won't find any down here. But the metal deposits alone should pay for our own helium. Hell, after this, we'll have enough jump fuel to bounce from one end of the settled systems to the next. Hey, more minerals, more money. And so the cycle repeats itself. Just no more unauthorized jumps in the house for room space, okay? He's just a big baby. There are worse lives. You know, most Dusties don't even make it this far. I have a good feeling about you. A group hug now or at the end of the shift? <sighs> One of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Promises, promises. Okay, let's see what we've got. How are we on time? Okay, so, this is this vehicle's top speed, you can only walk at this point. However, if you go straight for the cutter, which is a mining tool dead ahead, as soon as you pick up the cutter, you can start running around. So that's what I'm doing. Straight down here. And there's the cutter, grab the cutter, and now we can start running around. And that is it for the music. I don't like music in video games. I can't stand it. I just had it for the opening. Off you go. And let's go back and hook up with Lin. It's our current objective. Follow Lin. Okay, while she's talking there, let's just go ahead and show some initiative. Go back to where you picked up the cutter. Go into this tunnel here. And you're going to mine five beryllium ores. If you look at the crosshair, beryllium deposit right there. If you look at the crosshair for my cutter, if you hold down the aim button, watch the crosshair shrink up. If you use the cutter like this to mine deposit, you'll mine deposits, you'll mine a lot faster. A lot faster. Okay, I'll show you the difference. Here, I'm not going to aim. That's how long it takes. Hold down the aim button, shrink up that cross here, and you mine a lot faster. Okay? Who loves you? Slack loves us, that's right, don't you forget it. Alright, let's go back and hook up with Lynn. Uh, look at this one over here. Calvin! No! Ah, no, no, no! It's a laser, not a sledgehammer! Ease up! Benny, you must pay for break to be a millionaire! Let's go! Yeah, yeah, okay. What do we say, Dusty? You make your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. Come on, pick it up! Troy, what's the yield? Minimal at this point. Occasional glimmer, but it's weak. What do you think? Stay the course? No, ma'am. Juice ain't worth the squeeze. Well, okay then. Let's call this one tapped. Why don't you move over to that big vein we looked at? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Come yeah. on. Let's check it on Hella. Okay. Hella's down here. And she's just gonna walk down here. You can mine some more beryllium. You only need about, uh, well, for our purposes, we only need two beryllium. You don't have access to the inventory yet, so I'll show you that later. And I'm waiting for this guy to clear out that part right there.
Okay, at this point, if you're in a hurry, you could just run ahead all the way to the very end and complete the final objective of the, uh, this part of the mission. Uh, if you consider a spike in gravity readings a problem. I don't. You don't? What we're after, it'll read as an anomaly. That's what I was told, anyway. Okay, now you're starting to freak me out. Relax. It's just another job. Come on. We're getting close, I think. Yeah, everything is just... <laughs> Lynn, seriously, uh, there's something really effed up about this. Where is it, Hella? Through there, I think. Okay, you, you're up. Something goes wrong in there, we'll come get you. Uh, what could go wrong? <laughs> why would anything go wrong? Would you shut up? Both of you do your jobs. Client is on his way. Hey, don't look at me. I've done my part. <laughs> Okay, hold down the scan button to turn on the flashlight. And before you go across the bridge, let's just quickly go down here. There is a rare mineral here that uh, may, may, Operative Word may come in handy at the end of the game. Way at the end of the game. Could be a pain in the ass getting it, but it's right here now, so you might as well get it. It's this right here. Neodymium. I think there's another one over here. That's brilliant. There may be another one. Um, anyways, grab that and let's go to the magic blue dot, which is our objective. There's a magic blue dot, and I ran out of oxygen. And the game is, uh, let me just, uh, well, it has to be ready. the game is gonna force feed us hints. some other rare minerals here. Let's just grab a few of these. Normally the preferred way of getting minerals is just simply buy them. I'm just doing this for demonstrational purposes. And these are rather, they're not super rare, but they're somewhat uh, uncommon. Let's grab a few of these. Okay, that's enough of that. This is the objective right here. You have to break it up a little bit. And take the strange object. Take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? Alright, this is your character creation screen. If you screw this up, the game is now going to make a save automatically. By the way, you can save the game anytime you like. Um and make quick saves. The game is going to make a save automatically and you can reload that save and it will take you right back to that cutscene that we just saw before and you can do the character creation screen over again. Alright, so I got it all figured out exactly what I want to do. Let's use uh, this preset here, number 26. And that's good. Body, um, let's make her a little more Ruben-esque. There you go. A little more Rubenesque. There you go. Start your stuff. 
Nice. Hang on, let's see that again. That's what I'm talking about. There you go, predominantly male audience. A little bit of eye candy as we're making our way through the walkthrough. Um, next, that's all I want to do here. Face, let's give her a bit of a tan. And that's it. You can walk. Do you talk? I am as much you as you are part of oh. everything. Hey. All points connect okay. to here. When a star is born or dies, its existence. All right, that's enough talking. Hey, by the way, where'd you get that spacesuit? Unknowingly, you just answered your own questions. I did. For who creates things but creators? Who the what now? That is what they have been. Okay, that's enough talking for now. Okay, uh, background. Okay, here it gets into the strat the strategy. The strategy of it all. Basically what the game's giving you here with your background is three free skill points on in different skills. And they're all in the basic skill line, if you will. Um, and since you don't know anything about basic skills, this is kind of a crapshoot if you know anything about the game. But like I said, the game does give you a save right before this. So after you finish this character creation screen, if you don't like what you've done, because you're going to be able to see the skills after, it's going to be able to see the skill tree after you do this. If you don't like what you've done, you can just simply reload the save and do it over again. All right. Um, gives you a brief description of each skill, and they're grouped in groups of three, and you have to choose one of these. You can't just choose any three skills. You have to choose one of these. In my first playthrough, I chose. I believe file not found and I'll talk more about why um, the choice is important once we get to the skill screen and I'll be able to explain it what I'm gonna choose for this walkthrough is bounty hunter all right piloting targeting control systems and boost pack training all right bounty hunter next you get to choose three traits these are special bonuses and or uh, how should we say perks that you get let's just quickly go through each one alien DNA you volunteer for a controversial experiment that, could, that could combines alien and human DNA as a result you start with increased health and oxygen but healing and food items aren't as effective uh, basically start out with 200 health by default if you choose alien DNA you get an extra 50 health but uh, med packs aren't as effective med packs by default give you 4% health per second for 10 seconds. If you choose alien DNA, you only get 3% health per second for 10 seconds. So basically, default med pack cures 40% of your health. An alien DNA nerfed med pack will cure 30% of your health. That's the difference. Dream home. This is what I chose in my first playthrough. You want a luxurious, customizable house on a peaceful planet. Unfortunately, it comes with a $125,000 credit. 125,000 credit mortgage with gal bank that has to be paid weekly. How much do you pay weekly, Slack? You pay 500 credits weekly, but not really. Um, let me just turn this on over to post-production Slack, and it's going to show you exactly what the dream home looks like and what is involved with paying it off. Okay, if you get the dream home trait, this is what you get. Uh, right after finishing the first mission, um, one small step. This is when free roam begins. If you look in, if you press the quick mission button, you're gonna find this mission listed under all, okay? Dream home, right here. Visit your dream home on the planet Neswa. So you can just press that button right there, whatever it is for you, show on map. And it is in the Olympus system, okay? There's Alpha Centauri, here's Olympus. Click on that, click on Olympus, and jump. Quick map. Bring it on around. This is a special character I created just for this purpose. I called him Enlightened Dream Kid. Okay, so click on... You're going to see your home there on the planet. Just spin the, the planet around. You can see the name of your character and home. And click on that and land.
exit shift. By the way, this is the option I went for in my first playthrough. And it looks like I got enough XP to level up. Yep, my first play uh, first playthrough, this is the option I went for. <coughs> Pardon me, and if I have time, I'll show you what I finally did with it. Okay, so basically, uh, like the description says, it comes with a 125,000 credit mortgage. You don't have to pay it off right away, uh, but you will have to pay 500 credits weekly. Now, let me explain how this works. It's not like you pay 500 credits every single week that passes by in Starfield. You only pay 500 credits as you enter the home, and then you now have the home for the next week. So basically, it's like paying rent. If you decide to leave your home for months, for say three or four months, you, you're not going to accrue three or four months worth of 500 weekly charges. You only get charged when you come back and show up at the door and then they'll say, give us 500 bucks and you can use your home for another week. Okay, so it's not like 500 bucks every single week. It doesn't work like that. It's only when you like actually enter the home. Okay, so now I have the home for another week. And this is what you get by default. There's nothing here. It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's a fixer-upper. It's a fixer-upper. It's a beautiful home, but it's a fixer-upper. The only piece of equipment you get is a cooking station right here. All right, that's it. And then let me just show you all the rooms. It's a luxurious home. I mean, you know, in real life, I would just love to have this home. It'd be fantastic, but uh, yeah, it's a fixer-upper. You're not under any obligation to pay off the mortgage at all. In my first playthrough, I didn't. I just kind of did the math, and just going out in the patio here, I just kind of did the math and said, am I going to show up in this home 250 times, which would be 125,000 credits? And I figured, probably not. Even if I did, I'd still rather pay the 125, or pr rather pay the, uh, the 500 credits every time. Basically, it's um, it's a convenience thing. You can build all your your equipment and everything here, which is what I did. If I have time, I'll show you what I did. Uh, I didn't do much. I just like I made a complete. I made it a functional man cave. Okay, don't listen to October 16th slack. October 17th slack is already much wiser beyond years. Um, here's my dream home, all decked out. If you're going to have all my YouTube viewers over for a Starfield launch party, I should fix the place up. So I fixed the place up. Come on in, and I'll show you around. Um, you want to wipe your feet here? Because like, I've been working on this all morning, and I don't want to, like, you know? Okay, thanks. Okay, so here's my new dream home. Here is my workshop area every workbench imaginable set up here weapon workbench spacesuit workbench industrial workbench storage crate pharmaceutical lab research research lab and a mission board and a ton of storage crates so um this is one huge advantage over the basement in the lodge which i'm going to show you uh, shortly a ton of storage crates okay so like I've got like storage crate for each kind of like equipment here's my um, weapons storage crate helmet storage storage crate spacesuit storage crate and um, just like oh this is power pack storage storage crate and I know I didn't take out the trash kind of behind schedule this morning this is where I sleep because I don't actually have a bedroom why slack? Like, because all the other rooms are like filled with other stuff. And um, yeah, I should really move this couch here because somebody got injured last week. Um, somebody there was somebody's playing darts and somebody else was like having a drink here and yeah. So I, I should really move this. Um, yeah, I'll figure that out later. Here's my living room area. I couldn't find a table big enough for this model, so I just had to put it on the floor. Here's my trophy wall. I 
Did they do anything to the bathroom? Yeah, I put a little table here. And in the upstairs bathroom, I put a coffee machine because sometimes in the morning I'm in a real hurry. <laughs> Watch your step here. Somebody injured themselves kicking like uh, they stubbed their toe on that last week. And yeah, it was like, you know. Here's my gym. This is a work in progress. Okay, we got a drink machine in the gym, water cooler. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Down here is my office. This is a work in progress, too. Yeah, I know, but I don't even have a proper gaming chair. This really sucks. I gotta get a better gaming chair. I should get a bigger table, too. Definitely get a bigger table. And I want an espresso machine in the office. So I should probably get a bigger table, make this smaller. And yeah, move some things around here. We're work in progress. Work in progress. And down here is the, uh, the recreation room. The pool table. I might swap it out for a ping pong table. I don't know. This is also a work in progress. Okay, so that's my new dream home. I'll go see that. So, here's the deal. This morning I realized that everything, practically everything you build in the dream home counts as an outpost module. So in case you're wondering what counts as an outpost module, you know when you're actually at an outpost and you put, build like these little habitat things? Those count as outpost modules and you have to build different ones. And it's like, you know, the, the number of outpost modules you have to build in order to max out the outpost engineering skill is just colossal. Like I've got to make 50 here. So if you're wondering how you can rapidly um, develop the outpost management skill or outpost engineering skill, Get the dream home and start slapping up a whole bunch of wall posters and uh, wall mounts. I, I think practically everything I built here counted as an outpost module because in effect the dream home itself is an outpost. So almost everything I built counted as a module. So I am now uh, completely have different, completely different opinion about the dream home. It actually serves a huge strategic advantage. It's not just like, you know, um, for convenience or for like, you know, for aesthetics. All this stuff actually serves as, you know, if you want to max out your um, outpost engineering, that's the way to do it. Especially the posters. I was just astonished. Just slap up a poster. Where's the posters? Here. There's 27 posters. And they each cost only one ornamental and one structural each. Let's see if I can find one I didn't put up yet. This one here. Oh, I don't have the I don't have any more structural. That's the thing when you're like decorating your home, make sure you stock up on a ton of structural. Because you, that's the one thing that you burn through a lot. Yep. So that's how to um, that's how to rapidly develop the outpost engineering skill, right? So, post a comment. What do you think about my dream home? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to it. All right. So that's what's involved with the dream home. Um, let's scroll on down here and and like post production Slack show you what's involved with kid stuff, which is similar to dream home. Um, your parents are alive and well, and you can visit them at their home, but you will automatically send them 2% of your credits home to them every week. All right, post-production Slack, take us on a little tour of what kid stuff involves. Okay, kid stuff. Let's see, you chose the kid stuff trait in your character creation screen, and um, you have finished the first mission, the first main mission. Okay, completed one small step and now you're basically in free roam mode. You can do whatever you want before going off into the wild blue yonder. Um, look on your activity screen, your activity list, and you're going to have this entry right here. See your parents at the Pioneer Tower. Activate that. Go to your map and you should have the mass district icon right there. Click on that and fast travel there. 
This will put us right in front of the subway. Do a 180, there's the subway right there. The magic blue dot indicating our kid stuff quest. Go to the residential district. Here in the residential district, turn to the right, and you're gonna find the Pioneer Towers right here. That's where your parents are. Let's go see them. Elevator up. Now, when you first meet your parents, it's gonna be a lot of dialogue. They're gonna be gushing over you. The prodigal son has returned, or the prodigal daughter, however you want to play it. And I'm just gonna skip over that. If you want to see what the dialogue is, you gotta, you know, get the kid stuff. Um, trait and see for yourself again. Okay, I just want to get past that and then I'll show you what's up. What? Well, I'm going to go to the other side. 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 All right, after the opening dialogue, you can actually sleep here. Here's your, um, this room right here is your room. Okay, you can sleep in this bed. And here's your old room as a kid. Come here and you'll find this item right here. High school backpack. Pick that up. And a note from mom. Hi, I passed up your old high school backpack. Blah, 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 blah. I know you're all grown, but the backpack has the best storage on the market. Maybe you could use it with Argos. If not, let me know and I'll donate it. Love mom. Okay, this is actually useful. Go to your inventory. Go to packs. High school backpack. As you can see, our current mass is maximum mass is 135. Basically, mass is your carry weight. That's how much items I'm carrying now in kilograms. This is the, my maximum allowable carry weight in kilograms before I'm going to be over encumbered. If you use the high school backpack, that'll bump it up to 145 instead of 135. Okay, so that's one advantage of kid stuff. And then they're going to like periodically just show up everywhere as you're doing missions. And they're going to give you little missions and step and fetch a quest and stuff like that. And you get stuff. I've never actually played through with the get stuff trait. Um, but I read about it. Um, if you did play through as with the get stuff trait, please post what kind of stuff you got. Like, details, please. Like, don't just say, I really got a kick-ass pistol. Say exactly what kind of pistol you got. Because we would all be interested in exactly, is it worth it? You know to do this because basically um Where's you got to send you don't know where that two percent of your money home every week and with this walkthrough we're going to be making a ton of money so Every single, this is not like the dream home where it's like, it, you know, it only happens when you actually go into the walk to the home. This is like, I tested this and every single week, 2% of whatever cash you have on hand gets extracted and sent home. So if you make a ton of money, if you're going to be making a ton of money as we're going to be doing the, in this walkthrough, that money that we send home could actually uh, accumulate, like, you know, could, you know, be a lot in the end um so yeah i mean if you're carrying out 100,000 credits you know two percent it's like 2,000 credits so you know that's gonna pile up and one thing i do know because i was curious i just googled it i was curious what what do you get you know with the kid stuff trait and one thing i realized going to your ship here okay a little bit of tiny spoiler here. Near the end of the main quest line, you're going to be re required to get a ship that has a 21 year, 21 light year jump range, at the very least. Right now, the Frontier only has a 16 light year jump range. Um, I've heard that if you have the kid stuff trait, your parents will actually give you a ship eventually that has a 21 light year jump range. So that's one way around that problem near the end of the game. You could also modify your ship, whatever ship you have, but you know that'll just save you that problem. I ended up in my first playthrough just buying a ship that had a 21 light year jump range 
that cost 100,000 credits, 99,000 credits to be exact. So if you get the kid stuff trait, by the time you get to that point in the game, you might have sent home more than 100,000 in credits. So that's one consideration. Um, but like I said, post a comment. What was the best thing you got um, from your parents with the kid stuff trait? We'd all be very interested because I didn't use this and you know you'd have to pretty much do a whole playthrough to kind of like figure out whether it's worth it or not you know keep track of everything you got from your parents and see whether it's worth it or not so post a comment did you get some really good stuff from kid stuff trait what'd you get in details thanks very much thank you post-production slack next empath you're deeply connected with the feelings of other performing actions uh your companion likes will result in a temporary increase this involves uh, a little bit of guesswork with talking with your companion and getting him or her to like what you're doing and then you get um a combat effectiveness bonus i have no idea what that is because i've never chosen this trait extrovert um you use less oxygen when you're adventuring with human companions if you only plan on going through the main quest line, I would choose this because the main quest line saddles you with companions often, more often than not. Freestar Collective Settler, um, we are definitely going for this one because we're definitely going through the entire Freestar Collective quest line. So choose that. Hero Worship, this is a throwback to the uh, Oblivion, uh, Bethesda's Oblivion game. Um, I don't, I've never tried this. Anyone who wants to comment that's on this sounds really annoying. <laughs> Introvert is the opposite of extrovert. This is what I chose in my first playthrough because I'm a lone wolf, as everybody knows. You really need your alone time. Exerting yourself uses less oxygen. Oxygen is basically your stamina meter when adventuring alone, but more when adventuring with human companions. Kid stuff we already talked about. Um, Neon Street Rat is one of the faction um, traits you can choose. Raise Enlightened. Raised Enlightened. This gives you access to a special chest in the House of Enlightened in New Atlantis. All right, back to the future Slack here. I also chose Raised Enlightened in my first playthrough, um, but I already picked up the stuff, so it's gone from the chest, so I can't show you what I got. So I created a new test character called um, Enlightened Dream Kit. Took the same trait and I'm going to show you exactly what you get. So right after the first mission, right again, right after com completing one small step, you're in free roam mode, you can do whatever you want. Here we are at the lodge. Um, hit your map. Go back to your ship. Just go back to New Atlantis. That's the easiest way. This will take us back to the ship. Okay, here we are at the spaceport. There's our ship. Go down the ramp. Basically going to the well. Okay, and up this ramp here. I don't believe there's any... Um, because I was looking all over for this in my first playthrough. I couldn't find the chest. There's no activity or anything. No, there's nothing. So I actually didn't find this chest till about halfway through my first playthrough. I was like at level 30 or something when I finally found it. Can't run out of oxygen. In case you're wondering, your oxygen meter is that half circle in the bottom left corner. See, it's filling up now. That's your oxygen. Okay, so at this point, you find Jemison Mercantile. Go to the right of Jemison Mercantile. And you're going to find this elevator. Take this elevator down to the well. One thing I know don't, don't like is... Um, there's no way, like you have an oxygen meter, right? A visual oxygen meter, that half circle, that halfway circle on the bottom right corner. But there's no way to see how much oxygen you actually have. 
Does anybody know? Because I've been looking all over for this. You have a health meter. There's your health meter right there. That's how much health I have. That's my maximum health. There is the level up meter. That's how many uh, XP I have. That's how much I need to get to the next level. Where is the oxygen meter? Like the actual, how much actual oxygen you have. Because there's ways of increasing that and decreasing that. It would be really, really helpful to know the exact number. Anybody know? Post a comment. I haven't been able to find it. I'm looking all over that. Anyways, uh, back to, sorry, <laughs> I got off on a tangent. Raised Enlightened. Okay, here we are in the well. It's kind of like an, a seedy underground mall. Okay? Go down here and just turn to the left right here. And there it is right there. House of the Enlightened. Then so go down here. If you chose the Raised Enlightened trait, there will be a chest here full of goodies. Okay, just go past this guy down here. Down here into the uh, the crew room here, and here is your chest full of goodies. This is what you get. You get six med packs. This thing here plus ten health. That's that's pretty good. Six med packs, two of these, twenty percent health for two minutes, and plus two hundred damage resistance for two minutes. That's pretty good. And um some reading material. I have no idea if this has any strategic advantage or what. doesn't seem like it. And the boom pop. That's what you get. Let's just check out that reading material. Read them all. Just in case there's something happens if you read them. I didn't notice anything the first time I played through. Although I'm not sure if I actually um, checked all the reading material because I was like, you know, at that point I was like, like I said, at level 30 and getting six med packs and a couple of, you know, amps or whatever. I was like, what? That's all you get for like, you know, but at the beginning of the game, six med packs, you know. So, okay, so it looks like that reading material doesn't do anything. There is the chest, but wait a minute, there is more than one chest. There is, there is. I found another chest. If you choose Raised Enlightened, there's another chest in Aquila City. This is with a new character, so we're going to have to uh, fly to Cheyenne. Okay, so here's Alpha Centauri. Up here to the... I know this is like wrong saying in this direction is northeast but that's the best way you can describe it with the galaxy map okay we have to get to Cheyenne that's where Aquila City is so we'll have to jump to Narian set course jump because Cheyenne is too far okay so here we are and at this point you should be able to get to Aquila City so hit up your map Back to system, look in the bottom right corner of the screen, whatever that button is for you, back to system, hit that button. And again, to get to the galaxy map. And it looks like Cheyenne is still out of range. So we're gonna have to go to Olympus. Set course, jump. And I have no bars in my grab jump. A couple bars and there we
And here's the killer city. Land. And we'll go right again and I'll show you that second house of the enlightened that I found. There may be more. In fact, I strongly suspect there are more. If you know where there is another or more house of enlightened, please post a comment. I googled it, I couldn't find any information. Good grief, the sound of uh, take off and grab jumps is like, a, it's like I can't even hear myself think. Okay, so here we are at Kiel City. Um, yeah, I googled it. House of the Enlightened. As far as everybody was concerned, there was only one chest. So people didn't even know about the second chest in Aquila City. Hold Here we are in Killer City. By order of Marshal Daniel Blake, I need to inform you we've got some trouble at Gal Bank. Yes, we're not really concerned by that. Sorry. Sorry. You didn't hear this from me, but things aren't going great. Yeah, we'll table that for a later date. We're definitely going to do that. And let me just uh, take this off here. Because that's not what this is all about. Okay, so here's the Kila City. Go straight down towards the main building there. And hang it right here. Go up these stairs. And here's another House of the Enlightened. And there should be another chest in here. I think it's down... There it is, right there. See, so there's actually at least two chests for the House of the Enlightened. There may be more. Like I said, I haven't searched absolutely everywhere in the game. It's a huge, huge freaking game. But, uh, yeah. So if you choose House of the Enlightened, you get, at the very least, a dozen med packs right at the very beginning of the game. And two more of these. This is pretty equivalent to what we just got. Okay. Do you know of any more House of the Enlightened that have a chest with goodies in them? Post a comment with details of exactly where they are. I suspect that there may be one in Cydonia on Mars, uh, but I haven't checked that out. I'm just guessing, you know, just speculating by what we've been finding so far. So there's at least two, there may be more. Okay, post a comment if you know there are another one or more. All right. Serpent's Embrace. Um, this is interesting. If you wanted to max out, like to have the most health possible, um, you start out with 200 health, like I said, by default. If you didn't choose this, if you chose Alien DNA, which will give you plus 50 health, Serpent's Embrace, which will give you plus 50 health as long as you're, you've grab jumped at least four hours ago. And grab jump is a special like warp speed thing you do with your spaceship. Okay, so you have to warp speed every four hours. Get in your spaceship and warp speed every four hours, and you get an extra 50 health. And then if you chose Terra Firma, between those three, you could really tank up right at the very beginning and have 350 health instead of 200 health by default. So that if you want to like tank up right at the very beginning, that's what I choose: Alien DNA, Serpent's Brace, and Terra Firma. But you'd be obliged to grab jump every four hours and if you don't there's a 20 health penalty so instead of giving you 50 health it subtracts 20 health because that's what that's all about and to further elaborate on that strategy um what you do to create like a total tank right at the very beginning of the game we're going to call this um a starting gate tank you, what you could do is you could choose the combat medic background this will give you a, a prick point in pistol certification um, but more importantly, we'll give you rank one of medicine and rank one of the wellness skills. And then, like I just said, choose Alien DNA, Serpent's Embrace, and Terra Firma. Okay, once again, Alien DNA, they'll give you an extra 50 health. Serpent's Embrace, uh, correction, that gives you plus 25 health as long as you've grab jumped in the, within the last four hours. And Terra Firma will give you 
plus 50 health as long as you're on the ground and you spend most of the time on the ground. Having done that, this is what your this will be your situation when you get into the game. You'll have rank one of the wellness, the wellness perk rather, which will increase your maximum health by 10%. Over to science, you'll have rank one of the medicine perk and med packs, trauma packs, emergency kits restore 10% additional health 10% faster. All right, back to physical, the wellness perk. To get to rank two, to be eligible for rank two, all you have to do is heal 200 damage. So basically just go into combat, get injured, heal yourself with med kits, and you can very easily get eligible for rank two. And you'll level up very quickly in the, at the beginning of the game. So you can get rank two, increase your health by max, maximum health by 20%. Once you get rank two, um, your new challenge will be to heal 500 health. So same thing, continue through. By the time you get to the lodge, you will have taken 500 damage and just heal using med packs or, or sleep in a bed. And then you can get to rank three. By the time you get to rank, by the time you get to the lodge rather, you could easily get to rank three of the wellness perk. And at that point, your maximum health will be increased by 30%. And as long as you've grab jumped within the last four hours and you're fighting on the ground, you could have a whopping 442 health at, at your disposal right at level three, right at the very beginning of the game. And I'm going to show you that. I did a test um, character and I didn't dub any commentary and I deleted the save. You wouldn't believe how many test characters I made um, to produce this video. So unfortunately I didn't dub in the commentary for that recording. But to show you the results of that test character, um, which I call starting gate tank. So here you go, starting a tank, a whopping 442 health right at the very beginning of the game. Normally you'd only have 200 health if you didn't have any other health bonuses. Plus your med packs heal more. All right. And just like as a combat medic and the three traits you're going to choose are Serpent's Embrace, Alien DNA and Terra Firma. As long as you're fighting on the ground and you've grab jumped in the, within the last four hours, um, you're good. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go with Freestar Collective Settler. Actually, I am going to go with Alien DNA. That's what I have in my notes here. Yep, Mr. Laptop says go with Alien DNA. So we're going with that. Extra 50 health and Terra Firma. And these two... I wouldn't get this at all. Because you don't really spend that much time in space. Taskmaster... Um, as occasionally, if you have crew trained in a certain, ch a certain ship system, that system will automatically repair itself to full health whenever it is damaged below 50%. Um, that might be useful. Although, I didn't really spend much time getting involved with the crew part of this game. So I can't really comment on that if somebody else wants to comment on how useful Taskmaster is. Um, be my guest. Okay, but we're going with Alien DNA, extra 50 health. Freestar collects a settler because we're definitely going through the entire Freestar Rangers quest line to get that luscious, luscious Star Eagle spaceship and um, Terra Firma, which give another another extra 50 health. So that'd be 300 health that we're starting out with. That's it. And I'm going to call her Chewbacca. But Slack, Chewbacca is a male Wookiee. That's right, Chewbacca is a male Wookiee. But I put it to the forum that Chewbacca could be a unisexual name. Okay? So, just like Leslie or Kim, Chewbacca. What the hell? Come on. <laughs> and that's it. And we're done. Bet you were expecting a quiet job compared to your last gig. Bounty hunter turned space miner. Well, you got the sample. Client's on his way, then we all get paid. You remember anything that happened? Uh, there was this light and music. Huh. Well, you passed out, that's for sure. Everything else, probably just your brain playing tricks. Either way, we got what we were looking for. All this trouble for that stupid thing? Huh. Sure don't look like much. Never mind what it looks like. 
It's worth more than this mine has pulled in all month. We'll be... Speak of the devil. All right. First of all, we now have access to all our inventory. Map. And here are the skills. So you can go through all these, check them out. Basically, the three skills you get are all along the top, the basic skills, separated into five different categories, physical, social, combat, science, and tech. Why I chose Bounty Hunter is because all those skills are in tech, and the way it works is the, these advanced skills, I think they're called. These are basic, these are advanced, these are expert, these are elite. I think that's the way it works. Um, you can't get any of the skills in the second row until you put at least a certain number of points in the first row. As you can see, I'm hovering over weapon engineering. Spend four more points in science to unlock advanced science skills. Expert and master. Sorry, not elite, master. Okay. There are two um, backgrounds that will put all three skills in the same category. Those are Bounty Hunter, which is what we chose, and Professor, which puts all the skills into science. So the way it works is because we put all our skills into tech, we only have to put one more point into tech before we can start with advanced skills. That's the advantage of choosing Bounty Hunter. And another advantage is, um, did I explain this? No, I did not. Um, each skill has four ranks and it will cost a skill point to get to the next rank. However, the next rank is locked until you complete a challenge. Every time you unlock a rank in a skill, the game throws a challenge at you. You can't just start throwing points willy nilly into all the skills. You have to complete a challenge each time. So now with the piloting skill, which we have rank one because we got Bounty Hunter, we are challenged with destroying five ships before we can get to rank two. All right. Now, here's why this is a good idea. Piloting skill requires five ships to get to rank two and the targeting control systems also requires destroying enemy ships, but in targeting mode. So that's the challenge for this. And you can do these concurrently so the same ships will actually complete the challenge for piloting and for targeting control systems as long as you're destroying the ship in targeting control system okay so that's why it's a good idea to get this and finally boost pack training you can't use boost packs until you get at least rank one you're going to be given a boost pack the minute you finish um the first mission right away they're just gonna hand it to you for free so this is a really good background to get another good background is file not found it's at the very bottom of the backgrounds list file not found gives you ballistics piloting and wellness and the reason why that's a good idea is because um, you're giving, wep of course, weapons right at the beginning. And this will be unlocked right away. Ballistic weapons do 10% more damage. And your challenge will be to kill 20 enemies with a ballistic weapon. And there's like a ton of enemies in the first mission. So you can complete this challenge pretty much quite readily. And we're going to be doing that anyways. And once again, piloting. Um, we're going to be going up to space before the end of the mission, so you can complete that. But we're going with um, Bounty Hunter with these three, all right? Now, at this point, if you go to load, the game automatically does a hard save for you right before um, the character creation screen. So you can actually just choose any background and any traits, go through, come to this point here, take a look at the skills, 
don't like what you chose, reload this. And it takes you back to this point here. Okay, right back at the character creation screen. Alright, so if you don't like what you did, reload that save. It's automatically made for you. You don't have to, because you don't even have access to um, a manual save at that point. Alright, so let me just quickly recreate my character. Okay, let me just get away from these guys so I can sign off without them right. blathering away. Alright, so we're going to pick up the walkthrough right here first thing in part 2 and we'll get into some combat, including a sick trick I invented for the first skirmish on the tarmac. My name is Major Slack and I definitely approve this video, especially since it took me three fucking days to produce. I'm not kidding. It took me three days. Um, just so you know, this hour-long video was gleaned from a whopping 240 gigabytes of gameplay footage. And um, I actually increased my total playtime by 7 hours just making this video. So my total playtime is now 151 hours instead of the 144 hours that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Huh? <laughs> Go figure. So I'd really appreciate it if y'all would give me a thumbs up. Alright? Click on that old thumbs up button and uh, post a comment. And most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. Alright, see you next time for part 2 of Starfield. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.